Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, I have a couple nifty surprises, so what do you think of being able to actually communicate with the creator? We'll talk about that toward the end. So let's dive into the pens. So the pens I have this week, uh, I actually was filming some uh, reviews, trying to get them stocked up. Uh, I need to film some first impressions, get them stocked up too, but uh, this is one of my reviews I filmed this week. This is a Prima 61, a Hungarian pen. Uh, may not look like much, although I do like the barrel very much, but very nice writer. Uh, this pen does look like much. <laughs> Central Pen 100820. I didn't think this would still be inked up this week, but I had enough other toys to play with, plus uh, digging in the dirt that I didn't use it up like I usually do after a week. Uh, Visconti, um, sorry, Visconti Mirage, drew a blank there. Oops. Another review that I filmed this week, Central Pen 2069. So expect that in the upcoming weeks. It was raining yesterday morning, so I filmed a bunch of reviews. Uh, Platinum 37776. I think I had too many sevens there. This has the Sheng Yo finish, which is fun. They have a very nifty finish coming out now, but, uh, you know, there's not another platinum nib I want, so we'll forego that. Um, I, I think this was this week's first impression of Rex Pen 2000. I brought it back out because I wanted you to see the ink that I put in it during that first impression the way it was supposed to be. Another review I filmed this week, a Japanese craftsman pen, so homemade, basically. Tatung 717, which I think was this week's review. Some Chinese vintage for a change. Uh, here's another review I filmed yesterday during the rain. Uh, Camel and Silver Sovereign, which is an Indian vintage. Oops, wow! Indian vintage pen. And if I sound a little stuffed up, it's because the allergies are getting to me. It is way more humid and way more rainy than it typically is in southwestern North Dakota. And holy buckets, it reminds me uh, why I don't live in a humid area. And finally, yes, you've seen it before, the part, Italics Parsons Essential, but I made a change. Uh, I emptied it out last week, so I decided to put in the fine nib. So, today is July 5th, 2019. Yesterday was July 4th, which is uh, the United States Independence Day. Uh, no, I didn't go to Washington, D.C. to get wet. Uh, I stayed here. There was plenty of fireworks right here in town, because people have to let them off. Uh, this ink is going to serve a double purpose. First of all, I wanted an ink in this pen, because I re filmed a review for it yesterday. Uh, this pen, this Prima 61, is Hungarian has an oblique medium pelican nib, which is unique. I know I should probably fill those with crayon, but I didn't. So, just a very attractive pen. Uh, I don't care for this, although it's unique. It makes it look like an eyedropper. And then the cap just doesn't seem to match the pen, but uh, what a nice pen once you get into it. So, uh, and that's the thing with vintage pens. A lot of them are Franken pens. Now this ink here is Rohrer and Klingner. Wow, and I didn't write the name of the pen. Let's try that again. I, I got done talking about the pen uh, in my video and uh, it feels like all I want to talk about is ink now. So the ink is Rohrer and Klingner. Oh, 
Alt Bordeaux. Uh, this was suggested to me. Uh, I made a throwaway remark a week or so ago that, oh, I love this Montegrappa Bordeaux, but it's discontinued and I'm sad. So somebody suggested this one as a replacement. So I'm trying out some replacements. So let's see where I last used it and we'll just sully the page and try out a replacement. May have been a while. Hmm. Okay, there's some Montegrappa Bordeaux, although in a very different pen, so may not be the best comparison. Oh, I mean, it's not dry yet. And again, different pen. Actually, you know what? I think I used it in a Montegrappa sometime back. I mean, it's an ink I like very much, so uh, it's got to be in here. Uh, but I'm thinking this is looking a little darker. And, you know, you're not going to find an exact match of shade. Uh, it just isn't going to happen unless somebody's stealing somebody's formula. Uh, I am... Montegrappa decided to go the route of the more saturated inks, which made me a little sad. Uh, I liked that one. I, I will admit I didn't really care about any of the others, but I did like that one. And uh, I know I've used Montegrappa Bordeaux, but I'm not running into any. Oh, well. I've got a little left over. I'll try it in some other pens and who knows. It's a nice enough color on its own, so we may, may just go with that. Alrighty. The next pen, my beloved Central Pen 100820 with the amazing finish. And quite the incredible nib. Uh, I know recently I reviewed another pen with an Isco nib. That I'm guessing is a central pen. This is a good French ink. I haven't reviewed too many French pens. Um, unless you consider Waterman French because they don't seem to be doing much in the United States anymore. Um, I believe a lot of them are made in France now. Califolio Aurora. Sty Pen Up was a French pen I reviewed. Um, not one of my better pens I've reviewed. <laughs> Sorry, anybody who's French that's listening. Uh, this is a Visconti Mirage, which is Italian. I want to thank whoever reminded me about this ink. I, I was looking for some good yellows a while back. And, uh, you know, I had a bottle of this. It just hadn't been out in a long time. And I kind of forgot the neat effect it has. Is It, it goes on so pale, and then it uh, darkens. I was trying to write a letter with it last night, which was probably a mistake. Um, I, cause I, I was having trouble reading my own writing. But then it would dry and darken and oxidize and all that. And then they're like, oh. Doggone it. I am all sorts of messing up the name of this ink. I'm not copying it off. I'm, and I'm talking while I'm writing. So that's always a great combination. It's like trying to correct tests while you watch TV. Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't happen. You've got to focus, do one thing well. And I'm trying to do two things at once. So I am a bad role model. This is a Central Pen 2069. It's a student pen. So, you know, not amazing. But really not a bad pen either. Put too many humps in the end there. Uh, the ink in it, another French ink, Girbon. I 
Euh, orange on the arm. which uh, would be French for Indian orange. This is uh, my Platinum 3776 with a Sheng Yo finish. It's a, one of those special editions. I think I already said that they've got a nifty one coming out now. Uh, this, this pen has a coarse nib in it, which is Platinum's way of saying it's a double broad. I almost wrote coarse there, but it's, or I did write coarse, I meant broad there. Uh, the ink in this is Roar and Klinger Helianthus. Yellow inks are, uh, they need a broad wet nib to work well. Um, you know, I, I think this Platinum Citrus Black would be an exception. But the lighter ones like this are uh, unusable in the wrong pen. Because you can't read them. This is uh, my first impression this week of Rex Pen 2000, which is apparently quite similar to some reform models. There was a Apparently a lot of cooperation between Rexpen slash Toes and uh, Reform, which was a German company. Rexpen, of course, is in Zagreb, Croatia, which back then would have been called uh, Czechlo... No, Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. Now you might remember in that video that my writing came out black. Uh, and I had this ink in it. What happened? I think, uh, and I don't know, but I think I just forgot to clean it before I did my uh, first impression. And usually I clean my vintage pens before I do the first impression. I'll admit I live dangerously with those that are not new. Or I'm sorry, those that are new. But, uh, yeah, I think I forgot, and so that came out just black. So, I'm glad you get to see the color it's meant to be. Although I seem to be very heavy on the oranges and yellows this week. Uh, or reds, because that's what you're, what's about to come out of this pen. This is a Japanese pen. This is uh, one I purchased from Etsy. It was... I don't really know who made it. It was made by a craftsman. Probably in the 1960s is what it said on the listing. And uh, I like, and you'll see sort of in the video, but it, it's kind of a demonstrator for a lever filler. And I don't know that I've run across a demonstrator lever filler. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, also a button filler. And heck, let's go with a, a touchdown filler too if we can get that. Uh, whoops, Japanese. Handmade. And the ink in it. The, I picked this one because it kind of cleans pens. If you watch the review, you'll see why I wanted that. And uh, no, the review isn't up yet. I filmed four yesterday during the rain. So now I am set almost to the end of the month of July. And uh, if I film some more reviews, my, my goal is to just get myself set well into the school year. Kind of like my plan was last year uh, when I had that unfortunate accident where I dropped the hard drive on the floor. Which we'll talk about that toward the end here. Tatung717 did a review of that this week. One thing I should point out is there are several methods of transliterating uh, Chinese into English and uh, 
one of the other methods you'll see D A D O N G. I think this is an older form. Sorry, I drew draw a blank there on the ink for a second. See that whole writing and talking thing? This is Noodler's Matahari's Cordial. So, very wet pen, very nice pen. Uh, somebody commented, well, I tried to find it on, eBay, on uh, the internet, but even on Taobao it wasn't there. And that's true. This is a vintage pen. I did a quick eBay search. I, I couldn't find one for sale right now. Um, they pop up. Just got to be patient. I did see some tattoos for sale, just not this one. Camel and Sovereign. Indian vintage. Very high quality pen. Uh, this is an ink I think needs a broader nib to really see it. This is Diamine Damson. It's a very dark purple. And in a lot of pens I've used it in, it actually just looks black. This would be one of those pens. And finally, this is my... Uh, Italics Parsons Essential. I took out the broad nib because the pen was empty and I put in this fine nib. Because I haven't spent a lot of time with the fine nib. I, I decided to go with the same ink in it. Uh, the ink here is Noodler's Periwinkle, which according to Nathan Tardif has something to do with snails. Um, not any snails I ever grew up around, but I will admit he lives in Massachusetts. I have driven through Massachusetts, but not spent a lot of time there. So uh, my next door neighbor is mowing the lawn, so I hope that doesn't interfere too much. I thought... She had done that already, but apparently not. Because <laughs> I'm recording this a little later in the morning than I typically like to. But must have been somebody else mowing their lawn, because I can see her on her lawn mowing right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, now her lawnmower quit. Maybe she heard me. I doubt it. Not over that Mo motor. Now, before I uh, switch back to camera A, my A-roll footage... I tried something, you know, I, I, I've done some surveys using the, the community tab. Uh, I, you know, I've asked about what do people think of driving videos, should I spin them off or keep them on channel? I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, one, of the other, one of the things I did just this week is I just showed a photograph of the uh, first impressions I have uh, already filmed and I said you know what would you like to see next so by quite a wide margin we have a winner Birmingham pens model a and you know it's probably a coincidence that I have this pen inked up right now with something else than what I used in the review but you know I, I will I'm not gonna write with it till you've seen a first impression on it but a uh, slight spoiler, you know, I'm pretty thrilled with it. Another thing that came up recently, I just was cleaning out my pen collection, looking at some pens I could give away or sell or something. No, th not this one. My Senator President. But I got to thinking, you know, that looks really similar to another very famous pen that uh, is kind of a big name, and I wonder how they compare. Yeah, I wonder how, and you know, this one's a lot heavier. I wonder how it compares to a Jin Hao 159. Wait, you didn't think I had a Mont Blanc 149, did you? <laughs> um, so, uh, 
I thought of it like literally as I was setting all this up, so you don't get to find out this week, but I think that's something I'll put in the video for next week. So don't tell anybody that I that it's not a Mobile 149. Maybe we'll get some people seeing it and getting excited. Then I can ruin their day. Look, it's a Jin Hao. So I actually have a review of a Jin Hao 159. I uh, didn't like it very much. I mean, it wrote well. It kept a good seal, but it wasn't very comfortable. And yet, I like the Senator a lot. And I'm already seeing, you know, just holding it like this, what I didn't like about it. I don't know, something about that Senator is just better. But we'll get into that next week. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. Uh, in other exciting news, I finally did another driving video. I know, to the displeasure of some and the pleasure of others, though those are always controversial and less viewed than anything else I do. Um, what it is, it's kind of that pens in use thing. I take notes. I like to research things and just research topics. And a driving video is just a chance to share some of that and organize it, basically. And, and I have asked on the community tab and in these videos before, you know, keep, keep them separate or split them off into another channel. And the consensus seems to have been, as long as I don't put on misleading titles, keep them together. So that's what I've continued to do. Uh, I try to w keep out of politics. I've got one I'm working on. I don't know if I'll get it done by Sunday, but I'm going to try. Because uh, I'm also working a lot out there still. Uh, but I'm working on one about labels. And I'm trying really hard to write it in such a way that I don't actually name any specific labels. <laughs> for reasons you'll see when you get to the video. Uh, but... Uh, you know, it's just part of that research thing. What my upcoming series on organization and productivity, which I'm not sure when I'm going to film it, but I've got ideas written down. That's another reason I want to get ahead on the, this filming so I can move these lights downstairs for a week and just film a whole bunch of them in my basement. I'm probably going to wait till a really hot week and just film every day downstairs and sit in my cool basement. Yes, I do have an air conditioner that you can't see up here. I haven't I ran it one day because it was super humid and it wasn't that hot, but it was so humid I was just sticky and gross. Um, but you, you, you can't run videos sitting beside an air conditioner that's running. So, uh, and it's literally like right there. So, uh, it, anyway, uh, and it goes out this window so it'll be even closer. So that, that, that'll probably be a good week to film all those. Those are going to be fairly simple to film. You know, it's going to be me in front of the green screen and then there's going to be text or pictures behind me. And I'm actually going to use the green screen the way in a way that's actually helpful to the video. So yeah, like I said, I, I it was a good experiment doing the, the green screen with the pen reviews, but I don't think it ever added anything to my videos. I just like this more natural setting where you get to see that there's a little green in my life. Uh, this winter you'll get to see there's a lot of white in my life because it'll snow. Um, you get to see some books on my shelves. You know, it's, it's more me instead of this artificial world that I created downstairs. So, yeah, it's sort of a pain having the lights set up up here. But, you know, I partially disassemble them and kick them out of the way. And batch filming helps a lot. So, I'm going to batch film... Uh, Probably a few first impressions. I've got a katab I want to put together. Yeah, it's ready. I just need to assemble it, put the sack in it, get everything working, test it. So I think that'll be when I film, when you, when I put up its first impression, that'll all be part of it. And then I have a couple other pens I want to do their first impressions. I'd like to uh, get through all the first impressions, at least pens that I bought, and then... Uh, I have some that were given to me. I want to start working my way through them. And uh, I'm working on culling the collection a little too. So that's exciting. But uh, lots of fireworks last night. So didn't get to bed real early. So it's probably good that I slept in. I, that's part of why I thought my neighbor had already mowed. Because that's what she does. She likes to mow early in the morning. I just kind of assumed when I heard a lawnmower running that it was her. But it wasn't. Um, so she probably stayed up late just like me um my hands are a little sore from 
all the weed pulling and stuff I've been doing, but that's a good kind of sore, right? So, I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, down in the comments, um, God, I just drew a complete blank what my question was. Whatever I said at the beginning of the video, please feel free to leave your comment down below. So I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.